In this video, I'm gonna share with you the one habit that I implemented five months ago that has absolutely transformed my life. Now, before I go into sharing that with you, there's one thing that I want to make very clear. Every time you want to add a new habit, you need at least 30 to 45 days of consistent work day after day in order for the new habit to actually start being implemented and just become second nature into your life. And what I learned from my billionaire mentor, Tony Robbins, is that if you want to add a new habit, simply stack it on top of an old habit. So for example, if you want to start taking supplements and you keep forgetting to take them in the morning, what you want to do is you want to stack them on top of an old habit, which is brushing your teeth every morning hopefully you brush your teeth. So then what happens is that brushing your teeth becomes a trigger to remind yourself that you need to also take your supplements. Now, without any further ado, let's dive right in. So if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know, about five months ago, I was walking down the aisle and out of nowhere, I dropped and I had a seizure on the ground. Never had a seizure in my life and just simply never experienced anything like that. And over the course of the following, you know, two to four weeks, I experienced anxiety and panic attacks like I've never experienced in my life, simply because my mind was going away on these trails of thoughts that, you know, what if I am walking down the street and I also fall again and I have a seizure? What if I'm sitting at a restaurant, I have a seizure? What if I'm in the middle of a meeting with my team, I have a seizure? Just simply because it happened with no previous warning. I was only sleeping for about two hours a night. I couldn't leave the house. I simply couldn't live life. So I was simply in survival mode and I needed to start implementing new habits in order for me to go back to any type of normal life. So what I started doing is I started reading a bunch of books about psychology, about routine, about thoughts and where they come from and, and anxiety and habits and all that stuff. And what I came to realize is that at the end of the day, the reason why we feel anxious, the reason why we feel afraid, the reason why everything bad happens in our lives, it's simply because it stems from a single thought. And what that thought does, it triggers an emotion. But the cool thing is that every single emotion only lasts for 90 seconds. Unless another thought triggers another emotion, that thought passes, so does that emotion. However, if new thoughts are triggered, therefore they trigger new emotions, eventually what's gonna happen is also your physiology is going to start reacting. And this is why sometimes when you get bad news or something happens, you start feeling dizzy because it's a thought then triggers an emotion, then triggers physiology. So for me, what was happening is that I was starting to think about what if I have a seizure? What's going to happen? How am I going to live life? How am I going to go about my business? How am I going to run my business? I still haven't even, you know, I don't have a child. What's going to happen to my wife? All these thoughts were going through my mind. Then I would feel anxious. My heart would tighten, my stomach would tighten, and then I would start having a panic attack and I couldn't move. And every time I want to leave the house, I start having a panic attack. So I knew that I needed to nip those thoughts in the butt and it all starts with your morning because that's the very first thing that happens the minute you're up new thoughts start coming to your mind and that really shapes the rest of your day and that's when i realized that i needed a morning routine because i didn't have any until then i would wake up i would sit on the toilet i would pull out my phone i would start playing with my phone get on instagram check my email you know get bombarded by by messages from my team and then i would just kind of roll into my day there was no structure to my day and what I realized after reading a whole bunch of books and watching a whole bunch of videos about the topic, that your morning routine really shapes the rest of your day. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the 10 things that I do when I first wake up in the morning that only take me 20 minutes. Now, before I go into that, if this is your first time to the channel, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and also turn on the bell so that way you get notified every time we we'll drop a brand new video. Now, do understand, this is month five of me doing this routine and it's gone through a bunch of iterations. And that's one thing that you also need to understand is that when you're first starting to put something together, formulating a new habit, don't overthink it. Don't think about this taking too long. It's not too, it's too little time. You know, is this right? Is it just start something, stack it on top of an old habit. And for me, the old habit was waking up in the morning. You have to wake up in the morning. So for me, the trigger is I wake up in the morning and bam, I go immediately into it. So the very first thing I do when my eyes open up and I am aware that I'm actually awake is I start with I am confirmations. Or you can call them affirmations or whatever you wanna call them, but that's simply things like I am great, I am healthy, I am awesome, I am beautiful, I am amazing, I am incredible. Anything that really comes to your mind, I just start saying I am and then just start seeing anything that's positive that comes to my mind and I just start repeating as many as I can think of at that time. Now, if you are thinking that sounds weird, why the hell are you doing that? Simply because I wanna keep my mind busy because if I don't do that, what's gonna happen is 
other random thoughts are going to start jumping in and then just simply bombarding my mind with a whole bunch of thoughts that are going to start taking me into all these different rabbit holes. Now, today, you know, the thoughts are not too bad, but five months ago when I was feeling anxiety in the morning when I first woke up, I would start thinking of, holy shit, my leg is twitchy. Holy shit, my heart is beating. Oh my God, my ear is buzzy. Oh my God, this, it's because of the seizure. And then that starts going into other thoughts. And then all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, I'm having a panic attack and I can't even breathe. So number one, I am affirmations. Number two, the night before, make sure that you have at least a cup full of water next to your head when, on your nightstand or whatever. And that should be a minimum of 12 to 16 ounces. And so as you are saying your affirmations, you want to just chug that water down. Now, why is that important? Because water rejuvenates your cells, which gets your body up and going. And that way your brain can start working. You know, your, your bowl starts turning so that way you can use the bathroom because it's very important for your digestive system and also gets your all of your cells going immediately. Number three, right after I use the restroom, what I do is I sit on my balcony and that's really where the remaining and the bigger chunk of my morning routine starts. Now, if you don't have a balcony, this literally could be anywhere. The reason why I sit on my balcony because I've got a great view and it just feels really nice in the morning. My alarm goes off at 6.15. So simply what I do is that I watch the sunrise as I'm do doing my morning routine. But this could literally be anywhere. It could be an office chair. It could be on your couch. It could be anywhere. Just not in your bed. Simply because you want to train your body that when I go to bed, I go to sleep. When I'm awake, I am out of the bed. So that way, it even helps your body wind down and sleep at night because it gets trained that this place, it's for sleeping. So when I get in here, I need to go to sleep. So number three for me is breath exercise. And that's when I go into what is called a energy breathing exercise. If you go to YouTube, I've got one section that's only five minutes uh, that I personally like to listen to every single morning. And that's just simply different kinds of breathing exercises in and out on at different speeds. And what that does, that's another thing to help your cells also rejuvenate because driving oxygen into your brain is going to help all of your cells start working and producing the right hormones so that you can actually get a, you know go about your day and again by now you're only about six seven minutes really into your morning because you just woke up and and and, and you started your breath exercise which is only five minutes there are some that are three minutes there are some that are two minutes you can really start whichever if you like them you can go 10 minutes i just like to do five minutes because i want my morning routine to be not more than 20 minutes long number four and that's something that i do is that i praise myself for something that I did yesterday that I'm proud of. And this could simply be things like, I took out the trash without my wife telling me. You know, I um, I attended these meetings on time. I, you know, drove my wife to the airport. It could be the simplest things, or it could be, I invested a million dollars in this company, which I've been, you know, uh, 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 investigating the last six months. Or I made this major decision that's going to impact or destroy my life over the next decade or whatever it could be. Could be small, it could be large, just something that you did yesterday. And the reason I do that is because what you wanna do is you wanna start building trust with yourself. It's really important that your body and your brain start trusting you, right? And the reason being is this, think about last time you set a goal that was a, a big target for you. And then once you hit it, you were kind of bored of it and you already set a bigger goal before you even got there. So for me, say when it was, I want to make $10,000 a month. By the time I was making five, six, seven thousand, I already doubled, I already made it 50,000. By the time I was making 30, 40,000, I already made it 100,000. By the time I made it, I got the 70, 80, I already made it a million dollars a month. So what happens is your brain starts like not trusting you because for your brain to, to like make a shift and start believing that this new goal is possible, that once in, in its lifetime thought, no freaking way, it needs to feel that you are actually rewarding yourself, that you're actually celebrating the win. Because if you keep setting new goals and before you achieve them, you set bigger goals and you never celebrate, what's going to happen is your brain and your mind and yourself, you're going to start not trusting yourself and you want to build that trust. That's why it's important to start praising the little things so that you can also celebrate the big things. And again, it could be that you accomplished this huge goal that you've been trying to work at for the last three years. That would be an amazing celebration and praise for yourself, but it just makes sure that it's the, something that happened the day before. Now, number five, I pray for one person. And a prayer doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter what religion you are. If you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Buddhist, doesn't matter what you are. It's more of just thinking about one person and just saying a prayer for them. You could be praying to God. You could be praying to yourself. You could be praying to whoever you want to do to pray for. Just pray for someone else. 
And and for me, sometimes I'll pick, you know, someone in my family, someone in my uh, team, someone in my community, or I just take, uh, uh, say, someone that I saw and, you know, maybe a homeless that, that touched me the day before or something like that. And I just say a small, short prayer, because this could be 10, 20 seconds, saying a prayer for someone. And the reason being is because when we pray for someone else, we are spreading good karma in the world. And when you're spreading good karma in the world, good karma will come back to you. And also the other thing is that us human beings, and, and I'll be making more videos about this, we feel good when we contribute to others. And praying for someone else, especially praying to the your higher power that you believe in, is a massive thing that's going to make you feel really good about yourself. Now again, if you are enjoying this so far and you feel like, holy shit, someone really needs to hear about this, be sure to copy the link to this video and share it with a friend, with a relative, whoever else, because we've got five more to go. Now, number six for me is thinking of a goal that you want to accomplish and preferably in the next three to five years. So it's not something that you want to accomplish in six months or one year, but a goal that's far away. So for me in five years from now, I want to grow our company, BJK University, to have impacted 1 million lives and also to have multiple streams of skills that people can come and accomplish. Right now, we only coach people about how to sell on Amazon, but I want to have multiple skills, skill sets. That could be trading stocks, that could be investing in real estate, that could be crypto, it could be other things, right? I, I, and then potentially I want to have five different skills. So Amazon would be one of them and, and then four more. And then also I want BJK University to be able to provide people not just, you know, skills on how to, you know, improve their financial position, but also I want BJK University to be, a, a, you know, a, a holistic, well-rounded university providing people also skill building on how to create better relationships, how to work on their emotions, how to be happy, right? Because at the end of the day, financial success is one thing, but there is this whole other, you know, other section of our human self that no one really talks about. And I want to be able to offer all that. So in five years, that's what I want BJK University to look like. Therefore, that's what I think about. And that's the goal that I am thinking about. And think about it as it's happened already. Think about it as like live that that goal. Spend two, three minutes in the future, closing your eyes, feeling really good, connecting with yourself and really living that goal in the future. Number seven, do three affirmations. And this is three times three affirmations. And here's what I mean. So there's one thing as affirmations, which is I am confident, I am great, I am awesome, which is what you do the first part of your morning. But at this bar, I do three affirmations. What affirmations are, you say why you are this. So I say, I am healthy. And then what I do is, why am I healthy? I ask myself, why am I healthy? I'm healthy because I feel great. I feel incredible. You know, I have a doctor that works with me one-on-one -on -one once a month, and she always gives me awesome you know, supplements and is always looking at my health. Number two, and then I say three times of the affirmation. So I say three different affirmations. And then I say, and then I answer the question three times for each. So then number two, why am I healthy? I'm healthy because I work out four times a week and I have a personal trainer that busts my ass in the gym. Again, number three for, for why am I healthy? I'm healthy because, you know, uh, next week I'm doing a full body MRI to make sure that, you know, there's nothing wrong with my body. And if they find something, then I'll do everything I can to prevent it or catch it at least before it turns into something, you know, massive or whatever. And then I go to the second one. So number two, I am resilient. Why am I resilient? One, two, three, right? And I answer that what three times. And again, what that does, it not only does it train your mind that you are those things, but you also get to answer those things for yourself to why I am, and you get to trust yourself and improve on your confidence. Number eight, and this gotta be one of my favorites, it's three things that I am grateful for and why I am grateful for those things. Gratitude by far has been the, the thing that has transformed my life. And here's what I mean. So an emotion, as I was explaining earlier in this video, an emotion will come in and it'll trigger or, or a thought will come in and it'll trigger an emotion. If an emotion, if, if, if more emotions are triggered because more thoughts were triggered, then that's when your physiology is going to react. However, gratitude is the only emotion that cannot exist with, an, with another one. Fear, anger, those are the reason why you become anxious, you become stressed out. What gratitude does, it comes and overtakes everything else because our brains are only wired to focus on one thing. They cannot focus on a problem and a solution. And what gratitude does, it really just looks at solutions like, holy shit, I'm grateful for these things. And those could be the simplest things. They don't need to be big things. It doesn't need to be, well, thank you, God, because I have a million dollars in the bank or I drive a BMW. No, 
thank you God for the shirt that I'm wearing. You know, there are other people around out there that don't even have a shirt like this to wear. Thank you, you know, and it could be again, and I'm saying God because that's that's who I believe in. That's my higher power, but it could be to anyone that you pray for, right? It could be literally anything that you pray for, right? But it's always good to pray for a higher power for you to have a higher power in yourself because then you you kind of like you surrender everything that happens around you that you can't even explain, like the ocean, the skies. Well, how do they exist? They're not man-made. How do they exist? Well, there's got to be something bigger than you that you believe in that you can surrender all those thoughts in other or thoughts to. Otherwise, you'll sit and kind of think about it for the rest of your life and never really find any answers, right? And then I say, well, thank you for, for the ocean, you know, because of this ocean, every morning I am able to wake up and look at it and just feel joy. Thank you for this for, for the sun, because regardless of what is going on, you know, this, it shines every single morning. Regardless of what yesterday happened, it shines every morning. Why am I, you know, why am I thankful for the sun? And again, three times why you're thankful for that one thing. Well, I'm thankful for the sun because you know what? It just provides warmth, regardless how cold it could be. It just provides warmth. Number three, why why am I thankful for the sun? Because you know what? It shows us how awesome life is. You know, it's just such a it's got such a beautiful shape, and and so you just go into explaining why you're grateful, and then pick three things. So then you go to the second thing, and the third thing, and so on. Number nine, and you're probably gonna be like, okay, Bashar, now you've absolutely lost your mind. This is crazy shit. Screw this. I'm clicking off. Trust me when I say this. But number nine is awesome. And this is giving gratitude to your body. And here's what I mean. So what I do is I, I say these things. I say, thank you. I love you. You're awesome. And then I go to my left hand and I say, thank you. I love you. You're awesome. And then I say three other things. You're incredible. You've stayed, you know, you, you've kept me alive all this whole time. I will do everything I can to appreciate you and to honor you. You've kept me alive this whole time. I'll do everything I can to appreciate you and honor you. And then three, three, three rubs, saying three different things. And you might say, okay, this is getting a little too crazy for me. What the hell is going on here? Something that I realized throughout my studies over the last five months is that our bodies are literally our temples. They are the vessel that are keeping us alive. You and me are not our bodies. We are the spirit within the body. We're not even our minds. We are the spirit before mind and thought. And what our bodies are, they are simply the vessel that are keeping us alive, right? That are keeping us, that are keeping the spirit inside of some, you know, inside of somewhere. It's a shell, right? It's like a car, you know? You want to honor your car. You want to, you know, take care of your car. It's like your house. You want to honor your house. You want to take care of your house. Otherwise, it's going to start falling. Otherwise, your roof will start leaking. When it rains, it's going to start leaking inside. You know, your plumbing will start uh, overflowing and then you're going to have shit all over your couch. Uh, uh, if it's your car, you know, if, the oil, if you don't change your oil, then the, the 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 engine will blow up, right? And then you can't drive or the transmission will blow up and then you can't drive anymore. The brakes will go and then you're really fucked, you know? So it's really important for you to honor your body. And what that does is you start thinking of your body in a completely different way. You stop shoving all the shit that we shove in our bodies every single day just because they make us feel good. So it's really important that you honor your body and that you respect your body. You provide it with all the nutrition and all the minerals that it needs. You, you think about twice about the, the stuff that you're shoving down your throat, right? When you start making that shift, if you've been wanting to get your ass to the gym, trust me, that will get your ass to the gym. Because for the longest time, I just was struggling always to stay positive, to stay motivated, to keep going to the gym. But once I started thinking about my body this way, it's like, holy shit, I really need to take care of this thing because this thing, I need it to get me to 90, to 100, 120, right? And if I don't take care of it, it'll start falling apart at 50 and I can't afford to do that. All right. Now we are here at the final thing. Now, before I go into the final thing, and, and I and, and this is really cool, the, the final one, number 10, it's one of my favorites as well. And I know I know I've been saying that all, all along, but literally this whole thing, once you perfect it, it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. I try to make it 15 minutes, but I really enjoy my morning routine. You know, sometimes it takes me 30 minutes, sometimes it takes me 45 minutes, but I can crunch it down in 20 minutes. So I know if I'm traveling, you know, I'll do it in 20 minutes and I'll just go out of my way. Now, the one thing that you don't wanna do is you don't want to be dependent on your morning routine. And here's what I mean. It's a morning, it's, it's called a morning routine for a reason, right? Because it gets your morning going and you want it to become a habit, you want it to become a routine, but you don't wanna do, a lot of times what people do is that they make the mistake of, if I don't do my morning routine, then the rest of my day is shit. It becomes a crutch and you don't want it to be a crutch. So if I missed it one day, oh well, you know, like yesterday, 
I woke up late because I was traveling the day before and I just rushed and I had to get to a meeting. And so I didn't do my morning routine until like 7.30 p.m. And the reason why, I, like, you know, at that point, it's like, well, I go to sleep at 9.30, 10 o'clock. It's like, at that point, who gives a shit? You're gonna do it the next morning. But because I really enjoy it, it makes me feel really good. And I was shifting my focus from like busy work to creative work. And so I needed to kind of like clear my mind a little bit. And I was like, you know what? Perfect. I didn't do my morning routine. I'm going to go into it. Usually if that's the case, I'll just do a, a breath work real quick. And then I'll kind of go into the next thing. All right. Are we ready for number 10? Because it is my favorite. But do make sure that after I finish my number 10, I'll be sharing with you a video here where it was about a month after my anxiety and my seizure. And, and you can see kind of the progress that I've made over the last few months. And, and you could see my perspective then, and you can compare it to my perspective now. That was, you know, it was a video posted on July 8th. And so this was about three months ago or so, three and a half months ago. And then I share with you exactly how I dealt with anxiety as a business owner and hopefully can share with you some insight. All right, so number 10 for me, and that's something that I love, is reading. I read every single morning. Again, there are some days where I skip it um, for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, I said that my entire morning routine is 20 minutes, but that's outside of my reading time. So everything that I said, one to nine, can finish, you can finish it in, in, in 20 minutes. And then if you want, and this is not mandatory, obviously it's something that if you want. For me, I realized that the reason why I am here, I have a business that does, you know, this year we'll do about $20 million. And the reason why I was able to do that, last year we did nine and a half million. And so we've literally doubled our, our sales. The year before that, we did 1.2. So we went from 1.2 to nine and a half to now 20 million. The reason why I was able to do that was because of my knowledge, the knowledge that I gained from my mentors. And so I literally this year, we've spent over half a million dollars that we've invested in mentors. And I know some of you watching be like, dude, I don't got half a million dollars to go spend on mentors. And that's okay, because that's not how I started. My first course was 500 bucks, but something that's cheap, that's literally less than 10 or $20, it's books. And right now the book that I'm reading is Elon Musk and I'm almost through with the book. It's an awesome thing. And you want to make it into a habit. And the reason why I've added to my morning routine, because again, in order for you to add a new habit is you stack it on an old habit. So my morning routine, the first chunk of it, I stacked it on top of an old habit, which was waking up, right? And then what I did is when I wanted to add another habit, which was a which was reading, I stacked it on what now is an old habit, which is my morning routine. And I simply spend about 20 to 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll spend 10, sometimes I'll spend 15, sometimes I'll spend 45 minutes. But it's up to you how long you spend to read. But what you do is you gain knowledge, you gain perspective, you gain new things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get a hold of. Like Elon Musk, I don't give a shit who you are. You're not getting two seconds of Elon Musk's time, but I can you know, read this two, 300 page book in a couple of days and get an inside look into not what the day to day Elon Musk, you know, life looks like, but his trajectory, his life journey over the last 20 years, how he started and how he got to where he is. Because a lot of people look at people's chapter 20 and they try to compare them to their own chapter one and a half. And they say, holy shit, this guy is so much ahead of me. I can never get there. It's really good to look at people's, you know, starting off and how they started. So that way you can gain perspective and you can gain inspiration. Outside of that, I hope you guys loved this video. If you did, please check out this video where, I, again, I explained to you exactly what I went through and how you can deal with anxiety um, as a business owner or as an aspiring business owner. Because those of you watching here, you're probably either own a business or you aspire to own a business. And it's really important for you to know. And look, anxiety is going to happen, whether if you go through a health crisis or just stress from work or whatever, all of us have experienced anxiety at some point of our lives and will continue to experience anxiety. And you want to know how to navigate through it. Outside of that, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.